So Star Wars Squadrons is out, and after having played it for a few hours, I figured I'd give some of my first thoughts. Today we'll take a quick look at my first impressions on the game after playing the first couple missions. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. I should note that before I get into this, this will be a spoiler-free review for the most part. I'm not far enough in the story to really comment on any details. And any discussion about the story stuff, I will put at the end of the video, and I will make it very clear when I'm going to talk about story stuff. So Star Wars Squadrons is out, the Star Wars flight simulator that we have been waiting for anxiously since the middle of this year. This game puts you in the cockpit seat of one of various types of starfighters during the later stages of the Galactic Civil War. So let's start with the obvious, the flight controls. Now my first impressions of it were on the Xbox. And having played other flight simulators on the console, I was relatively pleased with the level of customizability it gave me in the control scheme. Even on console, you have the ability to map the controls to whatever button suits your liking in whichever way feels the most natural and comfortable to you. It did mean I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what control scheme actually worked the best for me, but I'd rather have that as opposed to being locked into whatever control scheme the devs picked. I highly recommend if you're picking this game up, especially with the intention to play it in VR, also picking up a hands-on throttle and stick, or a HOTAS system. The way this game plays, it simply seems like it would be more enjoyable to play with a throttle and a stick. If you plan to play the game in VR, I can tell, even though I've only played it on the console so far, that it is really well geared towards being played in VR. Much of the story and dialogue happens in a first-person environment that is cohesive with a VR experience. Many of the little cutscenes and briefing segments, for example, you have the ability to freely look around the room, which I can only attribute to part of the game's efforts to be completely playable in VR. As for the flying itself, it feels surprisingly nice. I was a little bit worried because this seemed to be kind of a hybrid between like an Ace Combat style fighter pilot game and one of the old space flight simulator kind of things. But this seems to mesh the sort of zero gravity aspect of space flight with sort of what you'd expect from flying a fighter jet. And they seem to mesh pretty well. As a result, as someone who's more familiar with flight simulators, the flying came natural to me after a little bit of playing. I'd say within about 30 minutes I got the hang of handling the spacecraft properly. When it came to handling weapons and systems on board the fighters, a lot of it made sense and a lot of it was relatively intuitive. The displays you have in front of you give you basically all the information you would need. From the status of your weapons and repair abilities to the amount of ammo you have left. When it comes to doing things like shifting around power, those systems will feel very familiar to anyone who's played games like Elite Dangerous. You spend much of your time shifting power between weapons, shields, and engines, and these boost various aspects of your ship's performance. Now, in the first few hours of the campaign, I was only able to fly fighters and interceptors, but I do think I got a pretty good feel for both of those roles. As one would expect, the fighter seems relatively well-rounded, more geared toward engaging other starfighters, but capable of engaging other larger targets, while the interceptor is finely honed on the objective of taking down other starfighters. And while the game does not feature an auto-lock system like what we had in Battlefront 2, it doesn't feel particularly hard to hit your target when you're firing at a relatively long range. Combine that with the fact that most of the fighters and interceptors have some sort of lock-on missile that can engage other starfighters, and you end up with a system that makes it fairly easy for new players to hop in and jump right into a fight and be relatively effective. So now I'm going to talk about the story a little bit. Once again, I don't think I've gotten far enough to have any real major spoilers, but if you really want to go in completely clean, now would be the time to click off the video. So the story takes place during the Galactic Civil War, and the first mission, the prologue mission, takes place shortly after the destruction of Alderaan. During that prologue, you play as both an Imperial TIE Fighter pilot and a Rebel X-Wing pilot in an altercation involving a convoy of refugees fleeing Alderaan. The game then jumps forward four years, where you play as a new fighter squadron formed for the New Republic. There the real meat of the story begins, and you start to learn what the real heart of this game is about. From what I can tell, based on how far into this game I've gotten, one of the key elements of this story will be Project Starhawk. For those of you who don't know, that's the project to convert old Imperial-class Star Destroyers into new usable warships for the New Republic, specifically the Starhawk-class battleship. One of the key plot elements of the beginning segment of the story is stealing an Imperial-class Star Destroyer for use by Project Starhawk. So all in all, after playing the first couple missions, I really am having a blast playing Star Wars Squadrons. The Starfighter combat is fun and yet challenging. As for the story, the story is intriguing. Learning more about that year in between the Battle of Endor and the Battle of Jakku is always something that I want more of from Star Wars. And on top of that, you get to fly some of the most iconic fighters in science fiction history. If you want to learn the history behind some of the fighters you'll be able to fly in the game, I'll leave a link up here to my playlist of videos on Starfighter lore. 
And down in the comments, I want you to let me know, have you played the game and what are your thoughts on it? Are you having a blast or is it really kind of not what you're looking for out of Star Wars video games right now? And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin and I will see you next time.